Well, good evening and welcome on behalf of Embra City TV and in conjunction with Fourth Capital. Uh, this is an event hosted by myself, Callum Smith. And tonight's guests are newly appointed manager, Gary Naismith, and our recently appointed sporting director, James McDonough. So welcome, guys. Good evening. How are you? Hi, Carl. How are you doing? You well? So, the format is tonight, guys, Good. it's supporter-led, so um, we're waiting on questions coming in from the people that are watching online, but firstly, Gary, I want to welcome you to the, to the club. Um, can I say that we've been absolutely overwhelmed by the amount of positive comments posted on, on the social medias, um, but also you must be delighted at getting your suit out of the dry cleaners and uh, getting ready for the dugout. Yeah, I'm not decided yet if I'm going to wear a suit or a track suit. It'd normally be a suit, but just with a with the restrictions and stuff just now. But eh, no, I'm buzzing. You know, I took my first training session last night um, and I think it's about the first time I've been on a training pitch in about 21 months. So I was buzzing to be back, probably talking a little bit too much. My voice has gone a little bit. But um, no, really, really excited to be back, really, and to have an opportunity, as I've said previously in my interviews, to have an opportunity at such an ambitious club that are forward thinking and plans for the future Count myself very fortunate to get the, the chance to manage such a club. Yeah, it's been a crazy week for you, really, because I think um, pretty much everybody's been grabbing a bit of your time over over this week since the, the announcement of, not necessarily James, um, going upstairs, but, but yourself <coughs> getting put in the in the hot seat after that. Yeah, it's been, there's a wee bit of everything, you know, obviously, um, sort of agreeing the deal with the board and then, then it getting announced and then, well, meeting the players then again get announced and then obviously me and James had to have conversations about how we're going to work going forward. There's been other conversations with the chairman, with the owner. Then obviously me and James have to get down to business as well with things that we've got to do. Um, and then you're trying to gather as much information as you can on the squad, you know, so getting the, the games that we've already played this season, getting the players' individual clips, looking to see if there's anybody available that can strengthen the squad. So, yeah, I've quite quickly been working my way through A4 sheets of paper to do lists and um, it's been a hectic few days. Yeah, I mean, how quickly did the process take place? Um, you know, after it was, it was made, uh, common knowledge that, that James was, was going upstairs? Yeah, we were, I think it was, seems that long ago, but I think it was just the weekend <laughs> and then, listen, the, the talks went quite quickly, you know, as soon as I... You know, I had an idea going in that I was wanting to, if I got offered the job, I was going to take it. The talks went well. It was everything I wanted to hear and more. Um, and I got offered offered the deal to be, and it was done quite very quickly, actually. So, you know, it was, um, I think, for start to finish in negotiations, it was probably done in about 20 or 30 minutes. So, yeah, an eagerness yeah. for both parties to get it done, which is always pleasing to see. Sure, sure. And James, I'm going to come to uh, yourself now. I mean, um, you know, to move upstairs at this stage of the season shows that you're you're really comfortable with the, the succession plan and that's went ahead and, and obviously something that you were also involved in as well. Yeah, I think it's been a, a unique situation for one manager to leave and work with the next manager and, and you know, start start well so far, get on with each other quickly. Um, and introduce the next manager. So it's not often that happens in football. Normally the previous manager leaves through really good results or really bad. And the, the manager coming in just has to pick it up himself. So for the two of us, it's been a really lengthy uh, sort of process over the week in terms of getting things done. Um, but, you know, even before, you know, Gary said about last weekend, I knew obviously I was going to be moving upstairs and to work with the owner and the chairman to identify people and go through that process. So it probably went on a little bit longer for me. Um, and we were delighted because, I know it's easy to say in hindsight, but Gary was top of the list and it's not often you get your number one target either. Yeah, <clears throat> and it's um, it's really quite a unique situation as well because, as you say, when the manager's roles um, come up, it, it tends to be, um, you know, somewhere maybe where that, the, the club involved are, are looking to avoid relegation or playoffs, etc. And Ember City very comfortable position um, easy for me to say I guess at the moment um, but again you know you're, you're looking at um, a transition period of a team that no doubt Gary's got his thoughts and, and James you'll have your thoughts as to where we should be at the end of the season No I think we're, I think we've both got the same thoughts on that really I think you know 
we're never going to say what we can't do. You know, I've said this, Queen's Park are 10 points clear us or something, but you can never say that, never in football. But I think the immediate aim for us is to make sure that we that we finish in, in the playoff positions. As it stands just now, we're five points outside them. There's still going to be plenty of points to play for. So I think both of us are first, are first thing we've got to try and get into the playoffs this season. Yep, yep. Well, thanks for that. And we've got our first question coming in from Ash Wilson. Um, just saying hello to the guys. Um, firstly, for, for Gary and James, congratulations on your role. Um, and he wants to ask what the fans can do for, for you guys, for Edinburgh City. I think the obvious answer is to get behind the team and the, the staff and everybody at the club to try and drive us on, which is really difficult just now because you can't get along to the game. So unless you're able to get a ladder and climb up on top of that garage and, and shout over and give the, the players a wee bit of uh, confidence, if you can't do that, I think it's just best you can, you know, log into the games, um, home or away, and just try and get back behind the, the, the team. Hopefully we'll be League One next season, but if it is League Two, when it all gets back to normal, it's just get behind. We want to grow the club. We want to grow the fan base. So get along to the games, get your friends along, bring the family along and and uh, really look forward to the future. Gary? Yeah, for me, well, as you say, there was a lot of positivity with my announcement. So I hope by the time the fans come back, there's still that positivity. So, um, <laughs> you know, it's a strange thing for me. You know, it's going to be strange. Man, you know, James has obviously experienced it, but managing a team without any fans and stuff. Um, but for me, you know, it's not so much about what they can do for me going forward just now. It's just that um, I'm not really on social media, but my wife and that is. And as I say, I've been overwhelmed with the amount of good wishes. And there doesn't seem to be any negativity towards the appointment, which is always a good thing. So hopefully by the time the fans can get back in, that we've delivered something on the pitch. And when they come back, everybody's happy and we're cheering. And hopefully there's a wee bit of success at the end of the season. Sure, sure. And and Gary, has James briefed you on the garage too yet? Behind the dugout? No, he's not uh, He's not briefing <laughs> on that yet. They've probably kept those sort of details away from me until I'd accepted the job. <laughs> I'm sure you'll get to know them. Um, next question coming in from Lorraine Newborn. Um, welcome, Gary. Is promotion a realistic prospect this season? Yeah, Listen, the first and it is a realistic prospect, but first and foremost, we've got to get into the, the playoff positions to have a chance of doing that. So, you know, as I say, we have got a few points to make up. Um, I think the results, although I think speaking to James and looking back, I think we have only had one defeat in the last six games, but it seems that long ago. What I'm sort of trying to prepare myself for and try and make sure that it's not us is, I think there could be some unexpected results if you want and some strange results. Um, but it is a realistic, it is a realistic target if we can get into the playoffs, and that's the first thing we need to make up five points. That first and foremost, that's it. We can have all the long-term goals that we want, and it's great to have that and great to have ambition. But first and foremost, you know, if it's nine or thirteen games to go or whatever it may be, we're sort of starting at minus five if you want. So we need to try and catch that up quickly. Sure, sure. And James, just a, a, a question for yourself, please. Um, I mean, the role of sporting directors, it, you know, it's, it's many things to different clubs. Um, and no doubt, you know, your, your experience in coaching, dealing with players or agents, um, you know, do you think that's now going to just let Gary concentrate fully on team matters? Yeah, my role is probably split in <coughs> three key areas. <clears throat> and the first one being to support Gary and his role. So, whatever that may be, the decisions on the team and what players come in will be will be up to him, who he picks. I'm not going to sit in the stand and pass him down wee bits of paper, so I wouldn't worry about that. Um, but I'll be there just to give him as much support as we can. He can bounce things off us. Obviously, he's got the staff that's that's going to be there with him just now as well. So he's going to have plenty of support, um, but that's just part of my role. Obviously, the club want to move forward, so community and you know uh, the youths as well is going to be a, a huge role in that. Um, so I'll probably be split any three ways. Sure, and, and again, as you touched on community there, our, our next question, thanks very much, Jamie, for sending it, and this is for Jamie Mack. Um, again, warm welcome to the club, Gary. Directed at James, though, are you still going to be hands-on with the youth set up in your new role? Yeah, absolutely. In some ways, maybe more hands-on, some ways maybe a, a wee bit less, but certainly uh, plenty of involvement in it. You know, we want, to, we want to grow that side as well. We want everybody... It's not disjointed just now, but we want to bring everybody to make it 
a real proper club and make sure everybody's welcome along and get them along to the first team games um, and a real party of everything. So that'll be a big task in itself. There's a lot of good work goes on at the youths. There's a lot of kids that, that play football every week for Edinburgh City. So we just want to make everybody part of the one club. Gary, is that something that you're aware of, the size of the Edinburgh City youth section? Yeah, as you know, obviously I'm trying to find out as much as I can about the club. Um, and it's something that I'll look into in more detail, you know, and I'm sure me and James will have some conversations regarding how we see that going forward. And for me, it's great. You know, normally you would go on as, if you were a manager at a, another probably second division club or that, you would have to be trying to think about those sort of things yourself as the manager. And it can sometimes take away your time and your focus for the first team, which at this moment in time is is the main project. So to have James there, sort of, if you want, working behind the scenes on those projects and other projects and assisting me, you know, if we showed you our call logs to each other and our text messages over the last, say, 70, since probably since Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday, but especially Wednesday, we really got down to work on Wednesday. Yeah. Um, and the, and the, work, the work that we've done was, um, it was incredible. You know, both of us have that for a good nine or ten hours, getting around people, different stuff. So, um, and it's went well so far, obviously. Obviously. And any journey that we're going to go on, there's going to be, um, there'll be little bumps, there'll be little hiccups. I've never worked with a sporting director before. James has never been a sporting director before. We didn't claim to know everything, how it's meant to work. But for me, so far, so good. Sure, sure. And our next question coming in is from Thomas Lee. Um, thanks, Thomas. Will Gary be running with the current backroom staff or looking to bring in anyone else? But a couple well, for you. Uh, and set that that's sort of the first hand grenade that somebody's threw us right there. <laughs> um, to uh, to be honest, uh, set, I'm still sort of reviewing the the backroom staff, but there has been one change. Um, uh, Jim McQueen's left the club, and um, we've brought in uh, Alex Conan has agreed to come in as the new goalkeeping coach. Um, first and foremost, uh, I never got the chance to work with Jim, um, but. Obviously, if he's speaking to James, I know he's done a lot of good work at the club. So even though I, he never worked under me, I think it's only right with thank him for the work that he did. But in terms of Alex, Alex was somebody that I worked with at East Fife. Um, I wanted to try and take him with me to Queen of the South, but for different reasons, namely the job that he was in, I couldn't get him to commit to full time. He's uh, He's got the top qualification that you can get um, from UEFA for coaching goalkeepers. He, Delivers courses for the SFA, for UEFA, and for, for UEFA. And we've also got the added bonus that he's actually worked with Callum Mantel and Ryan Goodfellow as well before at previous clubs. So um, when I was thinking about my staff, and I thought there was a realistic chance that we could maybe get him this time, he was somebody that I wanted to bring back. You know, it's in theory, it's no fair on Jim because he's not done anything wrong. But sometimes at football club, people want to bring in their own staff and people mm -hmm. in football realise that's sort of that's the situation. It's not nice. It's not easy telling somebody that you're going to replace them. But unfortunately, it's one of the horrible parts of football that, that, that does happen. Sure, sure. Calm, I think that's Again. a good thing. <coughs> Calm, just to, sure. to jump in and just for me to thank mm -hmm. all the background staff uh, that, that I've had over the three and a half years, because um, there has been quite a few of them that, that are there just now and obviously ones that have left. So they've all added to the, to the club's progress up the leagues. And I think everybody should take credit in the work that they've done there. And as Gary says, you know, sometimes it's just football and, and you move on, but they should certainly all be proud of the work that they've done at the club. Sure, thanks. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. Um, again, Gary, I was I was fortunate enough to be um, at your, at the, well, at your first introduction um, to the squad on Tuesday. And I, and I hate, you know, saying the word passion because, you know, sometimes passion is 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 not really, you know, clarity of thought, etc. But, the, you know, the way that you were, that you you spoke to the players, um, you know, you were you were really on point there. Um, and again, it must have been just great to get to, to get back in front of a squad. Just explain, yeah, like, you know, what, what you're expecting. Slightly nervous, you know, addressing a group of players again after such a long time. I did have a little bit of butterflies. And, you know, I'm not going to tell everybody what I said, but, you know, it was basically split into four, four parts. How proud I was to be the manager. thought we had a good squad of players. What I expected for them what they should expect for me. And then um, just help telling them really about the chain of command with the changes and stuff, like who they should report to and stuff like that if they've got any issues or stuff. So 
I basically split into four parts. I didn't want to keep them too long. There'll be time to have chats as we go along. You know, we're conscious that you have players sitting for 20, 30 minutes. You lose their, you, you lose their concentration. We have to try and get some fitness work into them. So it was a, it was a 10, 15-minute talk. Um, I think I got my points across that I wanted to get across. I think the players took them on board. There wasn't any uncertainty. And as I say, last night at training, how I wanted to go about things, the players bought into that, bought into that idea. The ideas that I was trying to put across. Again, the training that I was main, mainly based on fitness, but we're trying to incorporate a lot of the ball into that. Um, and, you know, I really, really enjoyed being back on a training pitch again. I, I really enjoyed it. You know, I took the whole session myself last night because I just felt that the players had to, they had to hear me. They had to know what I was sort of wanting. And uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Sure. And I think the clarity of your expectations delivered on Tuesday went down very well. <laughs> hopefully, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> um, next question coming in from from Julie Scott, um, and this is for James. Uh, James, what's your your top three priorities in your new role? I think I touched on it earlier. There, um, probably just to elaborate a wee bit on that. So, obviously, supporting Gary with the first team um, as much as I can, whether that be recruitment or whatever may whatever way we see that going. Um, so the first team would be one area, the community programme would be another area, and, and all the youth teams and whatever. So that's probably the three main areas. And in terms of priorities, is just trying to make them all work, trying to improve them, trying to bring everybody together, trying to make them better. How can we take things forward? Always looking at the view what we've got and how can we improve it? And um, hopefully we can. Sure, sure. And and Gary, can I, can I just ask you at the moment, you know, what? What has been the the influencers, or who are the, who are the influencers in your career so far? Whether it be on the on the pitch, or who you've listened to whilst you were on the pitch, and and also when you've been managing. Yeah, it's a difficult question. That it's, especially when I've um, I've took something for all the managers that I've worked under, and you try and take wee bits and bobs, and you think, oh, I I really liked maybe how he spoke to us, or how he dealt with us, like his man management, and then somebody different, maybe not have so good a man management, you think, mm, I wouldn't speak to my players like that. And so you try and pick up on the things that you enjoy, that you sort of responded to. In terms of players, you know, it's it's very difficult that because I'm very fortunate to play with so many fantastic players. You know, there's maybe only one or two world-class players that I played with, but I played with a lot of very good players. So you pick up bits and bobs, you pick up different things. You know, I remember... Uh, Dave Watson, the old centre half at Everton, really, it was him that sort of really, when I went down there, sort of got me into lifting weights and looking after yourself and your diet and stuff like that. He was 38 at the time. I suppose Big Davey Weir, somebody that I've always looked up to, you know, if I was ever wanting advice on something, he'd probably be the person that I'd pick the phone up to. Sort of, was it Scotland with him, Everton, Hearts, roomed with him with Scotland for, and, with, and with Everton for a number of years, so Probably people like that, just people that you look at and think, wow, they've done really well in the game. If I can if I can follow what they've done, then it should help me in my career. With the management, you learn bits and bobs of every, every person, but you've got to be your own man. And um, I've had some good times. I've had some not so good times. And what you have to do, is, especially when you're at the game, is you have to self-reflect. You have to make a list, say, things that you've done well, things that you think, mm, I wouldn't maybe not have done that again. Have I been too lenient with the players or have I... You know, have I been too strict? Things like that. Is, is my man management needing to be adjusted? So you're all, always self-analysing yourself, trying to... And for me, I've had 21 months to self-analyse myself. So um, hopefully when I, when we get going again, there isn't going to be too many mistakes. Sure, that must be really difficult because, as you say, you know, 21 months out, but that's, you know, that's been broken up by, by two bouts of COVID, I guess. Um, so it does give you a lot of thinking time. Yeah, it was Maybe too much. Months. I was 21 months out of management. I wasn't 21 months out of football, obviously, for nine yeah. or ten months. I held the loans manager at heart. So that was great. Yes. Let me see how other things worked. Um, you know, coming up with how I thought we could improve that role in terms of how we, just reports and stuff like that. So I really enjoyed that. But then after that, you know, you apply. You know, I, I, I never applied for um, management jobs. To be honest, hardly any management jobs came up after I left Hearts. But... I was applying for jobs within football and, you know, some sometimes you got feedbacks and, and sometimes you never, and you start wondering, am I ever going to get back in? Now, obviously, COVID played a part in that. You know, a lot of managers uh, um, in previous years gone by would maybe have been under a little bit of pressure 
the COVID sort of, it, it, it sort of in a way kept some of them in a job, I think, if you go in previous seasons. But when you've been out at the end of 21 months, you actually think, am I ever going to get another shot at being a manager? Now, very fortunate, as James says, that um, you normally come in when a team have either been very good and the manager's got headhunted elsewhere or very bad. And, and neither of that's happened to me, you know, so I've came in. Obviously, it's a unique situation that the current, ma the previous manager still plays such an important part at the club. Um, but that's something I'm comfortable with. I know I never had any doubts about it. I thought it could work. Me and James knew each other for years. Um, we've seen each other socially on a couple of occasions. So I never really had any any worries about coming in and what and with James still being at the club, if you want. Sure, sure. And the club's very fortunate to, to have you in the chair as well. Um, but next question is coming in for, for Kay Winters. Thanks very much, Kay. Um, again, warm congratulations to the both of you. Your ears will be ringing that, with that now, so uh, long may that continue. But, Gary, uh, what, if any, changes will you be making? Well, this, is one, you've got, this is one you've got to be very careful. Of. See if you took over a team at this uh, in a pre-season or at the end of a season to start and you had the whole pre-season to work, you would come in and be able to change quite a lot. I've got to be watched that I don't change too much too quickly. One, the team weren't doing bad. You know, we would have liked to have been in a better position, but the team weren't doing bad. And if you look at James's record over the last three seasons, he's got a very high win ratio. So it's not as though there's a lot needs to be fixed. But if I come in and, you know, you could just use some, I'll use something like if James, for example, done zonal marking at corners and all of a sudden I try to change it to man marking and I've not had the right amount of time to work with the players on the pitch for that, they're going to get into a game thinking, oh, oh, I'm doing that, no, I'm not doing that. And so you have to, I'll be making small changes at the start, but if I give them too much, too quickly, I think I actually think it'll have a negative effect on the team and on and getting results. On the session that you've taken on Thursday and you'll observed on Tuesday, I mean, how are the players looking after that long layoff? And I know they've been doing their bits and pieces, maybe offline, etc., yeah, where, where was it in your mind? It's difficult to tell, really. Um, listen, the one thing about all, no team is going to come back and play their first game prepared to play games. After being off for such a long period of time, even though everybody has fitness programmes and they follow them, two weeks training for all the teams isn't enough to football training to come back and play games. But we're all in the same position, so we can't be using that as an excuse. So... A small part of results will come down to what players looked after themselves the best when they were off season, and that comes down to the individual. Something that I touched on in my meeting with them when I spoke to them on Tuesday that sometimes at part time level, you have to give yourself the best chance of being the best version of yourself, and that may mean that you have to go out a run on a night that isn't a training night, or you maybe need to watch what you're eating if you've got a tendency to put on weight where we can't keep an eye on you 24 hours a day for every day. So. I think it's um, it's a difficult one to really judge. They looked fit. Don't get me wrong. I've seen the data for the sessions that they've done. Good data. They're getting good distancing, good high-speed running. Where they're in terms of the other teams, we'll have no idea until we actually start playing them. You're in a catch-22. We got offered a friendly. Do you want to have a friendly before the game starts? Well, in an ideal world, I would like to see the players in a friendly. But my thinking was it'd be more beneficial to have another couple of training sessions with them and we maybe not have been conditioned enough to play a game. It would probably have been on Tuesday. That would mean that the players are going to play a game with maybe only five or six football sessions in them. We've got a couple of people that wouldn't have been able to play in that game just now. So you're then maybe going into a game with 15 outfield players. That means that some of them have got to play 90 minutes after only having maybe four or five training sessions. So for me, to take a friendly, it wasn't worth the risk because if we picked up a couple of injuries there and the players that wouldn't have been able to play in that game still went back for the first league game. It means you're going into the first league game with potentially only 13 outfield players. And you're going to probably need to use 16 players in your first league game. I am right in saying that, James. It's five subs now, isn't it? Yeah, five subs. So you've got to think that most teams in that first game are going to use 16 players. If you've got the luxury of having five subs, when you've not had a lot of training, everybody's going to use five subs. So... I didn't think it was right to take a game. I thought the risk game outweighed the, what would they got out of it. Sure, sure. 
Um, another question from from Lorraine here, and, it, and it's a few ifs and buts. So you know, just just run with it if you don't mind. Um, we've had a great result against Airdrie in, in the Scottish Cup, obviously. Um, and if we can get past four far, which I believe is a winnable tie, who would be your dream tie in the next round? <laughs> to be honest, I'd be happy just to get past <laughs> four and then take whoever. You know, I think you're right. It is a winnable tie. You know, we'll treat four for the respect that they deserve, and we'll do our work on them. And you will have them watch like we will for every team that we're going to play. And as James would have done when he was a manager, so they'll know what we're about to face. But you're right, it is a winnable game. Um, but you just take one game as it comes. And if we win that and we're in the next round, great. You know, the club's getting a bit more money. We've got to get some publicity. And then it's just one of them where you're sitting about probably in front of your TV, me, the players, all the fans. And you get that wee bit of excitement, you know, in your, in your stomach thinking, I wonder who we're going to get. And you get the wee nervous the wee bit nerves in your stomach 30 minutes before the draw. Now, I'm just the same, even though I'm the manager and I'm just mm -hmm. in the door. If we can get past 4 4, and I do say if, you know, I'm not wanting to sound cocky or arrogant or anything like that. But if we can get past 4 4, I'll be sitting in front of the TV with a little bit of nerves. But I don't really like speaking about what ifs. You know, when we get to that, and I think we're going to have three or four league games probably before that. So we've got a hell of a lot of games to take care of before that. And we'll take, and then we'll we'll get to the fourth four game when we get to it. But you know, I think everybody was probably wanting me to come on here and say hibs or hearts or something like that. But for me, you know, if we can win the game, I'll be more than happy with whoever we get. And like you say, you've got to show respect. I'll say hibs. <laughs> <laughs> show, show proper respect to to Forfar because again, they are you know higher division opposition. Um, so yeah, you're right. Absolutely. You're right in what you're saying. No, it's right in that, but don't forget, a lot of our players could play in a higher division as well. You know what I mean? So yep. I think yep. we're very fortunate that we've got players that could play in leagues that are higher above. So although they are above us, you know, we won't fear them because I believe we've got players just as good as for for if no better. But that's just my opinion. We have to yep. go out and show that my opinion's right. As you're seeing games getting played out now, do you think that lack of crowds... And we all want people back in football, but lack of crowds when you are playing maybe, uh, you know, higher league opposition, um, does that help, you know, the, the so-called smaller team? Yeah, yes and no, you know, but you know yourself, if we, if, we, if, we, if we got through that and we were to draw a big club at home, the atmosphere that we could generate in that, sometimes that gives you a better chance of causing an upset if there yep. isn't any fans there. So it can work both ways, really, you know. You're thinking about if we get maybe away to a big team and they've not got fans, does that mean that the big, the bigger team, the, the players will sort of switch off, they'll not be as focused and stuff like that? So you can look at that either way, I suppose. You know, For me, I would always want to play in front of fans. But what I would say is when you start playing a game as a player, well, for me, certainly, you just switched off like you were nervous. You thought, wow, that's a big crowd. But as soon as the, as soon as the whistle went, you're that focused in the game it shouldn't really matter if there's 100 people or 40,000 people because your concentration should be on the game. Yeah, sure. Next question is coming in from, from Bob Fallon. Um, thanks, Bob, for, for sending the question in. Um, James, what was the highlight of your time in the dugout? He's got me thinking there, just just when Gary was talking, it caught my eye, the question at the bottom of the screen, and just off the top of my head, you know, it was quite a lot, quite a lot of good, Good times, obviously. I think candidates would probably be beating Dunfermline one nothing. Ainsley Park was really good, and to take any team at Hamden and go and win, and you know to win in the style that we did win, and the goals that we scored that time was was excellent. But probably the game where we went away to Arbroath uh, and on that cup run to get to the semi final, I think going away to Arbroath at the time, who were flying and, and really doing well in, in League One, and to go there, go a goal behind the club's first game live on TV. In a cup tie to go a goal behind and win four one, which is probably the best one of the best performances. So loads of yeah, good ones, but that one maybe maybe sticks out. That was a special night, definitely. Certainly when you're away at our broth. Yeah, definitely Friday at our broth <laughs> live on TV. Four one is always sure. a helper. <laughs> Next question coming in from Regina. Um thanks Regina for your question. And Gary, congratulations on the new role. Um what's your favourite formation? I think maybe just in case anybody for Elgin's watching this, I'll say something like 3-6-1, something like that. <laughs> uh, 
I've played different formations. Honestly, you know, if I feel that I need to change a formation to give us a better chance of winning the game, I will. I would imagine if somebody put the statistics up with the, I think I've been a manager of roughly about 250 games, I'd imagine if people put the statistics up and says what formation did they play the most, it would probably have been 4-4-2 or 4-2-3-1. There isn't much variation apart from you've got one extra striker up the pitch, but probably between that, you know, I think I have played three at the back, maybe, I don't know, 30 or 40 games in my managerial career, but predominantly it's with four at the back. And James, your preferred formation when you were in the dugout? I probably never played it as much as as the other ones, but I prefer to play 4-2-3-1 most of the time when we were at Hibs and, and lesser extent Falkirk, we tried to get a second striker up, but 4-2-3-1 was, was my most favoured position, but uh, formation, but a lot of times we, we did go 4-4-2 or we played three at the back, a bit like what Gary's saying, you you get a feel for the game at the time or what you need to do or the players that are on form, sometimes it takes it as well. Um, but I think you've got to be flexible. In, I think, in what you I think on that one as well, you have to be flexible here because um, with the amount of games that are going to come up, you can say, just I'll just say a different formation, you can say we're going to play 3-5-2, that's my favourite formation. But with the amount of games that are going to come up, if you're two wing-backs, for example, in that formation, are injured or fatigued and you have to leave them out of game, or they're unavailable for whatever reason, you can't play 3-5-2 if you've not got the people to play the position. So you can, it can be a favourite formation, but if you've not got the players to play it, there's no point There's no point in playing that formation. So I think you've got to be flexible there, especially we're going to have to just take each game as it comes with us. It's an, an, a unique situation. I still don't know. I still don't know myself. Somebody's maybe going to ask it. I don't think we know exactly how many games we're going to play yet. I know that we've just had our first three fixtures came out. Um, so we've no idea if we're going to be playing Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday for four weeks, if there's got to be Thursday fixtures. I don't know. So I think we're just going on in this situation, we're just going to have to take each game as it comes, see what's available, and then try and work out. No work out the best way for us to stop the opposition. Just work out with what we've got available, what's the best formation for us to play in each and every game. Yeah, and a wry smile on James's face there, thinking to himself, I'm glad I'm, I'm not there in that position at the moment. <laughs> uh, no, no, it's, it's exactly, exactly that. It's, you know, when you're looking from the outside, you're talking there about management and it's, uh, and I, hopefully I'm not going to be like this at the back of the stands, you know, why is he doing this, why is he doing that? Because our relationship will... <laughs> I'll not make that happen, but it's it's all you know. You you've, everybody's been a fan, and you rock up to the game, and you get the team, and straight away fans. Why is he playing? Why is he playing that? And probably the answer simple. Somebody's not quite fit, and as Gary says, you're going to be playing Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday. If there is a Thursday game thrown in there, it'll be five games in ten days at that point. So sometimes, right. in the rest of the season, it could be the survival of the fittest. It could be the team that has eleven players mm -hmm. at the end of the season mm -hmm. and gets a chance to to go up. So. It's unique times. The whole yeah. season for me has just been mental, really. Sure. Question coming in for Campbell Scott. Gary, with your job at Harps as loan manager, um, will you be looking to use that experience and bring in some loan players to Edinburgh City? Um, obviously, you know, we're looking at the squad just now. I'm happy with the squad that we've got just now, the availability, but the worry is with the amount of games we're going to come up, you know, we're, we're looking, we're, we're probably going to have to try and add one or two bodies just to just to actually cope with the sheer volume of games. Going forward into next season, ideally you would always, always prefer everybody to be an Edinburgh City player. But everybody knows that that sometimes a player will come up at a, a higher league club that can significantly improve your team. So I think we'd be silly not to look at that. But, you know, the more their own permanent players we can have, the better, because you're working with them all the time then. You know, sometimes, and James has done well, the couple of lads that we've got in, just now, Rafa and Josh, we've got them Tuesday, Thursday. But I remember when I was at East Fife, for example, another part-time club, that a lot of the clubs, when we took players in and loan, they only wanted you to take them on a Thursday night. So then you're only getting a chance to work with them one night a week. So that's then when the more that you can have your own players, the better. But obviously, we're going to try and look at that. Listen, me, that was part of what me and James done on Wednesday. And between the two of us, we had a phone call. We divvied up the clubs. James, who do you know at that club? Who do you know there, Gary? Right, I'll take them, you take them. And within about seven or eight hours, me and James had been around about 20 clubs and we knew exactly who was available for loan and what positions and 
We were getting video footage sent to the, young, the younger ones that we maybe weren't aware of. To trust because you're you would never normally sign a player on a video. You would go and watch them live. But example, if you're bringing in some young players, the young players are they are some of them are actually on furlough or some of them are there's no games for them to play in just now. So you can't go and watch them like in a bounce game or that. So you're actually signing players just now or looking to sign players just now in a way that you wouldn't normally do that. You'd want to go and see somebody live in a game or two games or three games. So as I say, unusual situation. We are going to look to try and add one or two players to the squad. That has nothing to do or a reflection on the squad that we've currently got. It's to, just to do with the sheer amount. You know, we could, I think we all this, if, I think, and again, I'm, I may be speaking out of turn, but I think if it was, there's a notion that it could be nine games and then a split and then maybe the playoffs. Could, so you could maybe still have 16, 17 games in a very short period of time. So we probably need to try and bring in one or two bodies to help the squad cope with the volume of games. Sure. So, assuming that the chairman is not watching the night, are you still going to give us a scoop? Eh, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I think you've heard your scoop for the evening with the goalie. Coach. That's about as good as we can give you just now. Um, but no, listen. You know, let me rest assured, our fans, things haven't came to light just now. But the work that's getting done in the background, and hopefully, we're going to have some sort of positive news on and off the pitch very shortly. You know, so. We're working hard, and as I say, if any of the players are tuned into this, know that they will have. It's not a slight on what we've got. It's just we need to we need to add to help them because if we ask that current group of players to play all of their games, it isn't going to be fair to them. Sure, sure. So we'll come to our final question of the evening, um, and it will be a question for both yes. So you, you know, you will be involved in it. But um, again, for Bob Fallon, uh, welcome him and Gary, and a massive thank you to James for the last three years, and I think that. That's echoed from, from everybody within the club, certainly, and all of the supporters. Um, he's also got a, his own personal question because he, he runs the uh, unofficial supporters podcast. So there's an open invitation to either of you to, um, to take his, his invitation up and, and be on the podcast at some point. Um, but the real burning question here is, James, have you passed the hairdryer over to Gary or has Gary brought his own hairdryer into the dressing room for when it needs it? Well, firstly, thanks. Thanks for the thanks, if you like, uh, the last three years. Um, it has been enjoyable. And to come on the podcast any time, happy to help the supporters with anything that we can to to help them with their functions or whatever it may be. And uh, the hairdryer, well, Gary's definitely got more hair than me, so he'll need it. Um, I've got this bad reputation about having this hairdryer. I think it only, it's only happened once or twice, but when it did happen, <laughs> I think it was uh, there was no... Not much, uh, not much more to say about it. I think, to be honest, but you've got to have that. It, it didn't happen every week, but when it did happen, I think the players certainly were ducking and diving for a few things in the changing room and getting at the road. So I'm glad well, I, I think, can get I, get to a Saturday think, and not have that to worry about. I think that's the furthest I've seen a 16 inch pizza thrown. I think was <laughs> was maybe at that game, or or that was the comments for some of the players. No, that I was uh, in the still, changing room at that time. Still traveling. I can, I, assure, I can assure you, I wouldn't be throwing any pizza. I'd be eating the pizza <laughs> and throwing someone else. <laughs> <laughs> so you you'll be coming down with your own hair dryer then, Gary. Listen, hopefully, if required, if required. Hope, listen, every now and then the players need a wee reminder when they drop below <laughs> standards. That's only normal. Listen, you know one of the, the, one of your somebody that's done very much for the club at Edinburgh is Jim Jeffrey. Who oh, I used to get the hair dryer every ten minutes, never mind every game or every week. So I think we've came away for that a wee bit now. But listen, the players have to know when they drop below standards. That's like any club. You can't. Things have changed. You can't speak to players like that every 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 game now. You know what I mean? Or they'll just switch off and they'll stop responding. Yeah. They'll eventually just stop playing for you. And to be honest with you, when the players stop playing for you, it's generally the manager that will lose his job. So there, there'll be times when they have to get a reminder that it's not good enough. Um, but you've always just got to think about the way that you actually put. There's a couple of times thinking back now when I, if you want, lost the plot, and then you get home at night and you think to yourself, really. Why did I do that? That sometimes it's just for your benefit, and then you think, mm, probably didn't they handle that the right way. But I suppose it's easy in hindsight to to realise that you've done the wrong thing. So anyway, I've had a lot of time, as I said, self reflecting, and um, there's maybe one or two times that I could go, but wish I could go back and and change how I handled a defeat. I would say. Sure. Well, listen, guys, that's going to wrap it up for tonight. I want to thank you very much for spending your, your Friday evenings with us. Um, I know that there's a, a golf tournament on also. 
um, on one of the channels. So I'll let you get back to, to watching that as well and enjoying your weekend. Um, I know you're back in tomorrow, Gary, is it? With a couple yeah. of double sessions? Yeah, the players have got a double session and then... Um... Double session on, we've got double session Saturday, we've got a single Tuesday, a single Thursday, and then um, I'll speak to the owner to see if he's going to take us up to Elgin in a private jet. That's when it gets real next Saturday. <laughs> no, it does, it gets real definitely very quickly, and then that game you're into Albion Rovers, and then um, I think Stenhouse Muir, I think it was, if I've seen the first three games correctly, is that yeah. right, James? Yeah, yeah. You've got Elgin on Saturday, you've got Albion Rovers on Tuesday, and then you've got Stenny the following Saturday. So I don't want that to come across as I don't know. I quickly glanced at it. I've seen the first <laughs> thing, but I'm not busy just now trying to prepare the session for the players tomorrow. That There's no point in really worrying past Elgin. Elgin's the focus. That's the one that I've got to get previous games against Elgin, other, clip, other games that they have played, clips of their players. That's my focus really over, as well as obviously trying to pre prepare our players. The homework's got to get done on uh, Elgin and then we'll worry about the next team and the next team and the next team. Well, I'll let you get back to, to preparing for tomorrow and join the golf tonight. And uh, thanks very much, guys, for the time no you worries. spent with us tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Thank thanks. you. Cheers. Cheers. OK, thanks very much, guys, for um, staying with us tonight for all your questions. And look out for the next... Um, Facebook Live event with Edinburgh City. My name's Callum Smith. It's been a pleasure. Thanks very much.